broadening opportunities in our society and around the country. The third key goal of the 2023-24 budget was, in essence, equality, an idea that has been fundamental to the labour movement since its earliest forms and nowadays serves as a buzzword for any institution imaginable. It's interesting to see how the Labor government interprets the term through their new policies. Broadly speaking, this section focuses on closing gaps, with policies targeted towards marginalised aspects of certain demographics, especially women, children and Aboriginal people. The policies here can be categorised into three sections, child care and gender equality, national plan in violence against women and children, and closing gaps of regional and Indigenous communities. Child care and gender equality. The government is improving the pay parental leave scheme. Parental leave pay and dad and partner pay, both forms of payment given to people to look after new children, will combine into a single 20 week payment that can be shared between parents, which can be claimed by either parent, including single ones. Both parents who have passed an income and work desk can spend up to 100 payable days receiving the national minimum wage, which is currently 819.9 a week. The work test requires you have worked at least 10 out of 13 months before birth with a minimum of 300. 30 hours worked in that time. And the income test requires under $150,000 individual adjusted taxable income. Family incomes of less than $350,000 are also now eligible, affecting 3,000 parents. Beforehand, both parents had to seek payment through different systems, reducing eligibility and income benefits. This policy essentially gives both parents the same benefits from the government, giving women a bigger advantage in the workplace. The government has incurred cheaper early childhood education for 1.2 million families through changing the child gear subsidy. The childcare subsidy is used by the government to cover a portion of your childcare costs when you bring your kids to approved early childhood education centres. The amount that the government will cover will depend on the family's income and can be calculated online. According to the Department of Education, families on 80 grand or less will have the subsidy lifted to as high as 90% and a family on 120k with a child in care three days a week could save $1,700 a year. These subsidies are complemented by a $72.4 million package to train more childhood educators. These subsidies will make it easier for parents to work or do other activities while their kids are in care. The government has just changed the Workplace Gender Equality Act of 2012 to require gender pay gap information to be published by the Workplace Gender Equality Agency, WGEA. WGEA was established in 2012 to promote gender equality in workplaces, typically through advice, tools and education. These changes to the amendment are part of a continuing expansion of the government to ensure gender is part of all major budget decision making, to ensure quality of payment. National Plan and Violence Against Women and Children. $589 million to support stopping domestic violence, including tackling intergenerational disadvantage in communities. This is on top of $1.7 billion on the previous budget. $159 million is being used to extend the Family Domestic and Sexual Violence Response Partnership Agreement with states which intend to boost frontline delivery. The government is also strengthening sexual assault consent laws and making them more uniform through improvements to the family law system, addressing barriers of justice, including addressing gaps in supporting victims of visas. Uh, $194 million will be used to establish a dedicated Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander Action Plan which will include culturally responsive healing programs addressing immediate safety concerns and community-led services for First Nation children and families dealing with DV. The National Redress Scheme NRS, is a program providing support to remedy victims of institutional child exploitation. It was made in response to the Royal Commission into Institutional Responses to Child Sexual Abuse in 2012, which saw tens of thousands of calls and messages confirming that thousands of children were abused in various Australian institutions. The Albanese government has given NRS services an additional $142.2 million to ensure those who experienced institutional child sex abuse can continue accessing free, independent support in a safe and trauma-informed way. The money will go towards compensating victims through continuing the redress support services. Remote Australia will receive $199.8 million in an integrated package to address entrenched and concentrated disadvantage in Australian communities in collaboration with states. There are four notable parts of this package. $64 million to extend Stronger Places, Stronger People initiative, comprising and led by 10 communities across Australia, combining data, local understanding and evidence-based solutions to disrupt patterns of disadvantage. $7.8 million to construct a whole of government framework to address community disadvantage. Whole of government frameworks are formed between ministers and central agencies to keep departments working in sync together. $16.4 million for a life course data initiative, which is designed to capture data insights and improve how community disadvantages 
understood. $100 million outcomes fund. Outcomes funds are pools of money paid to people for achieving social outcomes. This will include $11.6 million to fund social enterprise development initiatives. This is designed to support organisations that intend to find financially sustainable ways to achieve positive social outcomes. One of the biggest unheard of actions the government has taken is spending $561 million to increase Indigenous Australian health, including $238 million to improve workers' capacity to treat cancer and 30 extra dialysis units being sent to regional and remote areas. $38.4 million to support some of the first community-led models of distance learning for remote Aboriginal children. An example of community-led Aboriginal education includes the Northern Land Council's Learning on Country program, which was extended by six years in 2022. It involves education by rangers and community elders to make new custodians of the country and employ massive portions of the community. $150 million to improve regional water security through the National Water Grid Fund, helping to close the gap in the 2023 Commonwealth Close and the Gap Implementation Plan. The fund is used on projects proposed by local communities to improve water supply and are approved by the National Water Grid Investment Framework. $20.8 million spent to undertake urgent repairs for Aboriginal Hostels Limited, AHLs and accommodation services for over 40 hostels, giving Aboriginal people a safe place to stay when leaving town for medical or family reasons.